minimalism has this perpetual recalibration that requires checking in with yourself about what your expectations are, what is realistic, what is your lifestyle, has it changed since you started your timeline, what needs to be adjusted in your decluttering process, um, what you want and how you're feeling and then acknowledging how you're feeling about visual clutter and figuring out what you're going to do about it. And sometimes it's just living with it. Sometimes it's dealing with it. Sometimes there's just, you're just tired <laughs> and you got to wait for a time in your schedule where you can deal with it and reset yourself back to a less stressful moment in, in our lives. It's, I don't know, 7.30 in the morning and I'm standing in front of my kitchen on like the 10th day that it looks like this, where every day I'm just resetting it, filling the dishwasher, and then it gets all crazy again. Um, <laughs> I've got a bunch of Amazon boxes here of all of our snowboarding gear for a trip that's coming up that I need everybody to try their stuff on so I can make sure that we're all set and no one's going to be freezing cold on their trip. Hallway filled with coats and boots and shoes. I've got, I don't know, karate gear, coats, three of my coats right here where I just didn't take the time to hang them up. It has been an insanely busy January. We had two gymnastics meets, two snowstorms, a whole bunch of karate practices, uh, co-op for homeschool. We've schooled every morning and I've not picked up the camera to film because my house has looked like this for January. And I stand before you after years of decluttering and talking about minimalism, and I get a little fearful to to film because I want you to understand that I li that living with less is joyful. <laughs> Sitting in my fifth year of decluttering and practicing minimalism, that minimalism has an artificial timeline. That in my head I have been operating as if. There's this endpoint where my home is just practically and easily managed with three kids. It's not. It looks like this in a busy season of life because I am tired at nine o'clock at night. I don't want to clean my kitchen. I don't want to put stuff away. We come in the door and we throw our stuff on the floor by the front door, our shoes, our coats, everything, because we're tired. Minimalism has this artificial timeline in my mind where I keep trying to calibrate towards what I'm supposed to be doing at four and a half years in uh, versus where I was three months in, six months in, one year in. And that's a dangerous thought process where I am expecting my home to be clutter-free and organized at all times. And it's just not. That's not life. <laughs> that's, that's our projects right now. We got school projects and stacks of books and art supplies and things we're doing and um and my home has to serve us and right now it is serving us it is a launch pad and a landing pad for us at the beginning of the day and the end of the day because we have this crazy busy life right now and i look forward to the summer when things slow down a little bit and we have a ton of time at home and my house is more organized and clean and clutter free. I have imposed this artificial timeline on myself where after after a number of years, I should be in a certain place that I had in my head, like a goal I set for myself. And that's just not real. And especially because our interests change over time and over the years and we pick up new hobbies, we drop old hobbies, and we have stuff that we have to get rid of. We have new stuff coming in because we've taken on new interests. We have new things that we're learning. We, we're constantly learning in our house. All five of us have things that we're learning more about. And leaning into those and providing opportunities for that means that stuff is going to ebb and flow. And the idea of perfectionism has to be let go of. And I have to repetitively let go of that idea year after year, <laughs> month after month, uh, honestly, day after day. It's not, it's, there's no perfect minimalism and there's no perfect way to declutter your home, organize it and be done forever. Unless you don't change <laughs> you don't, and you don't live with other people. When I first 
set out on this path of living with less and wanting to own less and started decluttering, I had in my mind that I would reach a place where our habits would be stacked and beautiful and when someone was finished with something, it would get put in its home and its place. That we would never have a counter that looks like this because it just, minimalism is going to cure that. <laughs> And that building up over time, the habits and getting rid of thousands of things would place us in a, a home environment that cured that bit of clutter. And that timeline did not come true. So anyway, the point of this video is to show you real life after decluttering thousands of things and four and a half years of practicing minimalism that I am really just minimal-ish because everything, every little nook and cranny that's bugging me right now for visual clutter can be reset in five to 10 minutes. The expectations that you have for yourself, for your home by of decluttering and understanding minimalism may not shake out the way that you think it will. And that you have to allow a ton of space for life and changes and new habits and things that are going on and we're going snowboarding for the first time. I didn't have anything <laughs> for three kids. Knowing that in a busy season of life your home is a landing pad, a safe space for you and your family and that if clutter on the countertops is easy to correct but snuggling in bed be before they go to sleep is more important than the junk on your counter. And that's okay to choose that in certain seasons of life. And there's a mental health aspect that comes with clutter because I am stressed and anxious daily right now because of the busy schedule and because my house looks like this um, when it doesn't typically and it bothers me. But I also know that I am front and center mom right now and that sometimes you can't have all the things on your timeline that you want at the same time. I'm gonna get busy on my kitchen here. I'm gonna start, if I were to start decluttering my whole house right now, I would have two places. One, I would start in the kitchen because it's usually the hub of a house for so many people. And when you get it clean and clear, it creates momentum for other parts of your house. The second place I would do is visual clutter anywhere in your house, if it's kitchen or otherwise, where it's something that's stressing you out and naming the emotional worth of, of clutter helps you decide if you want to donate it, trash it, or keep it. So for me right now, I have a lot of joy coming from cooking. And I have some new cookbooks that I've been trying and recipes I've been tagging. And anytime I have a couple hours at home in a busy schedule, I am cooking and I am preparing meals and putting them in the fridge for us to be able to eat out of convenience at home. Um, and so this is a lot of joy for me right now. And I have even move my cookbooks into my window so I see them here front and center when I'm cleaning my kitchen and it brings me a lot of joy. So that's not something I'm getting rid of. This is a tchotchke that they got from an arcade when we had a travel gymnastics meet earlier. <clears throat> it's been sitting on the counter for a week. Nobody's gonna eat astronaut strawberries. Like it's not gonna happen. I have to throw it out. <laughs> it never should have even made it into the house. It's just something they won at an arcade. So that's, that's my spiel where I'm at for January, how I'm going to get started. I'm starting in my kitchen to try to create momentum for organizing and decluttering the rest of my house. Uh, I shared a video recently of 10 habits you can do in 2024 and naming the emotional worth of something is number two on that list. Check out this video here, 10 habits that you can get 2024, uh, organize your home, organized and decluttered. I hope you're doing well and take care. I'll see you in the next video.